Farrah, the history of the hotel and resort began in the 1970s when tourism in Cyprus was starting to take flight. What was the vision of the resort back then and how has this evolved over the years? You know, I'm so happy you asked me that actually because I've been spending a lot of time concentrating on this very subject and it's something that I do want to delve into more next year, 2022, as part of my plan to relay what was the initial vision of the hotel and how it has actually stayed the same even though it's evolved into modern times. So my grandfather had the vision for the hotel in the 70s and his original idea actually was to have a resort hotel and marina in Lebanon. But obviously with the war and everything else that happened there that wasn't possible. And he came to Cyprus just to bring his business here um, only for a year before moving it over to Paris and he fell in love with Cyprus and there's so many people who have so many stories about why he fell in love with Cyprus and what it was that really drew him to the island. One of the big reasons was that he was a devout Greek Orthodox and he felt that he wasn't a minority here and another was obviously the culture, um, it was very similar to Lebanon and the climate and the way of living and um, he loved it. He really fell in love with the island and he really wanted to give back. The marina was the first marina, private marina in Cyprus and it's an official port of entry. So it really was the birthplace of a lot of companies evolving out of that and having their bread and butter. And it was very nice, a few years ago we did our 30 year anniversary party and so many people came up to me and they said, you know what, our whole life, our whole industry, our whole way of living has come out of this marina because we got into, whether it was some form of yachting or marine or um, so many other industries came out of it. So it was really, really nice to hear. Um, and this was something that my grandfather was very, very insistent on. Um, at the time, Cyprus did not have foreign uh, investors owning 100% of a company. They could be here, but only with a 49% maximum share of a company. And he was adamant that this was to be his company, his baby for his family. And he did not want just a hotel because they did say, okay, we'll let you have a hotel. And he was absolutely adamant, has to have a marina as well. So it really is a resort, a resort and a marina. Um, it's a whole project in itself, it's a whole little village, world here. How did your career in the hotel industry unfold? When I was growing up, I wanted to be a writer and an artist. So, and I was adamant that that was what I was gonna do. And um, I loved creative writing and I loved painting. And um, during my, my secondary schooling uh, years, um, I started to think more about business and um, I still love painting and I love writing but at the time I said well this is something I can get into later on in my life like I can you know be I remember being saying I can be 50 and go and do it but I can't be a writer and artist and be 50 and go into business so I then I decided okay no I did want to go into business and I did I was always very close with my father so I did spend a lot of time with him growing up and he was always talking about work. I would follow him to meetings. I always knew I wanted to be in Cyprus and I knew I wanted to be involved in one way or another. So that's when, yeah, I said I'm coming here. What are some of the biggest challenges that you are facing to improve the guest experience today? Well, the biggest right now is the health and safety and it's the expectations of the health and safety that is tough because some people come from different cultures or different backgrounds and they're fed up. They don't, they don't want to wear a mask, they don't want to look at a hand sanitizer, they just, they've done their tests and they come to Cyprus, they come to St. Raphael and they're like, that's it, we're done, we want to relax. And other people are still following the rules and reading up every day what, what should be done, what are the new regulations and they're wearing their masks and they're sanitizing and they're putting gloves on and then they see someone who isn't and it's managing that and trying to implement that and trying to make sure everyone's happy but they're still following all the health and safety guidelines that we're given from the ministry and from the from the European as well commissioners, it's all over. So that's tough in itself. And then offering the same relaxing experience that somebody wants when they're on holiday or if they're here for business in a safe environment. We do consider that we offer a very high standard, but we've had some very you know discerning and difficult clients come through the doors. So it's been on managing that expectation and 
and also understanding and having a lot of empathy because it's not their fault. You know, people have been so frustrated. They've got off a very stressful plane journey even to get here. So it's understanding that and basically saying, look, we're on the same same side. We're, you know, on the same team. Let's all calm down and let's move on from here. Make sure we have a wonderful stay in Cyprus. And on for the most part, we've managed quite well. The iconic tower at St. Raphael Resort is a luxury 14-story residential complex that offers an unparalleled living experience. What was the inspiration behind this one-of-a-kind landmark? We have um, 120 square meter two-bedroom apartments, so large luxury apartments with two bedrooms, but they can accommodate up to six people in them. Then we have our larger three-bedroom apartments, which are 240 square meters. Then we have the penthouse, which is 480. So some people are living here. Um, some people are in between here and another country, so this is their base in Cyprus. And we have other apartments that people are just frequenting for holidays and short term. When you're staying here, you get exclusive use of the rooftop bar, which is um, a pool area, beautiful swimming pool, 14 meters long, so you can do really nice laps with an infinity pool. And then there's a gym there as well. There's also just a lounge area and sun deck area. So that's exclusively for the residents of the tower. And then there's obviously room service and daily cleaning and everything else. And then you get to use all the facilities of the hotel, including the spa, the indoor pool, the outdoor pools, the gardens, the beach, all the restaurants. So you're luxury living within a hotel, but being private as well. There's no problem that doesn't have a solution. And that's what I say all the time. I say it to my kids, they're like, oh, we want you, mommy. I'm like, okay, well, what's the problem? We'll find a solution. At work, oh, this has happened and it's a disaster. We've got the clients arriving. Okay, well, what's the solution? So for every problem, there's a solution. Might not be the ideal thing you have in mind at the time, but we can find it.